Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Squat Cobbler. I am Dr. Mike at Official Pagan on Everything, and joining me as always. Hi, everybody. This is Kelly at K E L L Y T H U L on Twitter and Instagram. And we would greatly appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the Bog Panda YouTube channel, turning on those notifications, giving a few of our videos a like. Some comments here and there would be nice. And if you've got the time, maybe take a peek at some of our merchandise. Absolutely. Excellent job there, sir. I really think we're getting this down now at 240 whatever episodes we're in right now. Yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're quick learners. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> really got it down. Well, tonight it's probably going to be a quick one, which means it'll probably be three hours. Who knows? Uh, we're back talking a little bit of, of Halloween oriented content, I guess. Uh, we're talking about John Carpenter, and this is retro gaming themed. Uh, so we had covered the Atari 2600 Halloween game as part of our uh, Halloween series that we did for this year. And so just to kind of fill people in, or maybe if they missed that video, for shame, maybe if they missed that video, uh, are you a John Carpenter guy in general? Um, so not as big a John Carpenter guy as I've discovered you are, but uh, it's hard not to be a fan of his work. Uh, pretty diverse artist in terms of, of what he's done. Uh, and uh, most of what he's done is pretty cool. So yeah, I, I'd say I'm a fan. I'm not a super fan like you are though. Excellent, excellent. And just, you know, semi-related, are you a Jamie Lee Curtis fan? Um, uh, in in, in uh, Trading Places, absolutely. <laughs> big fan there. Um, in uh, True Lies, big fan there. Uh, and uh, so uh, selective works, yeah. And actually, in her more recent work in the Knives Out, uh, she's really good too. So, so yeah, so I'd say I'm Jamie, yes, I'm a fan. <laughs> And that's how Kelly gets canceled. So, <laughs> <laughs> notice I don't say these things, but I feel like I get the brunt of the plane. <laughs> you do for a reason, but <laughs> I think Knives uh, Out, Knives Out saved me. I kind of I pulled it all back. I enjoyed Knives Out as well. I'm excited that there are sequels to that coming to Netflix. Yeah, I just had no idea that James Bond was from Louisiana. That was the thing I was... <laughs> Really yeah, surprised. It, it did kind of throw me off when it was uh, the mysteries hosted by Foghorn Leghorn. Yeah. <laughs> James, I did enjoy the movie, though. James Boghorn Leg Bondhorn Leghorn. <laughs> uh, but tonight we're here to talk a little bit about John Carpenter and, and gaming related thing. So there is a cool video that's up and you're more of a Nintendo guy, I think, than I am, or at least current Nintendo stuff. Uh, so it is John Carpenter playing air quotes the the halloween theme on the nintendo labo so i've seen this in stores but i've never seen it in use this is actually the first time i've seen someone using it and i feel like if john carpenter is struggling to get a good sound out of it the average person has no chance uh do you have any specific relation to this have you seen this use this uh, so I, I have not, it works with the Nintendo switch, but it works with, I have a, a Nintendo switch light, which means my controllers don't detach. Uh, and okay. that, that's a pretty important factor for the, the Labo stuff. Uh, and it can, comes in a kit, it's an all cardboard, uh, fold together kind of stuff. And I, I have a, uh, we'll talk about it here in a second, but the whole VR space and cardboard has had an interesting relationship over time, but, uh, it, uh, piano which is what mr carpenter was interacting with but also a fishing rod a couple of cars with like an accelerator you could build um and uh gosh there's one other thing let me see if i can check my notes here real quick um uh nope can't <laughs> so i think that's most of it uh and uh so i really i really wasn't familiar i hadn't even seen these in the store and so uh, I had to do a little bit of research on it uh, to uh, afterwards, which was a little hard because the Labo website is no longer in existence. <laughs> uh, oh, really? It, it uh, redirects you to the VR page, which is a VR viewer, cardboard VR viewer for the Switch. Uh, so it's still in stock. You can still get it. You can still order it, but might be an indication that they're stepping away from it <laughs> at some point because the, the Labo site itself is no longer available. Interesting. Yeah. I saw this stuff in stores and particularly this one I saw in stores and I, I was kind of interested in it, 
just as a synth player, but watching someone who is far, far beyond my abilities <laughs> struggle through playing their own song. <laughs> that's when I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably better off that I didn't go this route. Yeah, and John Carpenter acted exactly like I would have wanted John Carpenter to act <laughs> when interacting <laughs> with a cardboard piano powered by a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he didn't seem overly enthusiastic about no, it. He was not not happy. I don't know who that guy is that's helping him out, like it's a sister. I mean, it'd be a cool job, and it's obviously a pretty thankless job because he's like, "Come in here, and fix this. Go away." Go away. It was just uh, the guy's kind of coming in, but you could tell he was digging it. Uh, but it was it was pretty interesting to hear. Yeah, it um, not the best rendition of the Halloween theme I've ever heard, and it <laughs> probably not probably had to do more with the instrument than the uh, artist. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he knows that song pretty well. I think so. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. And if you have a switch, you can go pick all these up. I think the little piano thing would be be cool. What I mentioned a little bit earlier is the whole cardboard relationship with VR is that, you know, early in the day, there was a uh, Google Cardboard where they were uh, saying, hey, just for, you know, minimal, like five bucks, you're going to get this little kit. You can fold it together and you can create your own VR viewer, you can viewer and you can kind of rubber band your phone into it and uh, have the VR experience through cardboard. And I've got a whole, and I'll see if I can maybe get a shot of the various, hey, you want to do VR? Here's like a cheap, not particularly effective way to do VR. <laughs> so I've got a little plastic clip on thing that you can do it with. I got a couple of the cardboards, uh, some assembled, some not. Uh, and, uh, it uh, never it kind of worked a little bit, but um, the uh, cardboard doesn't seem to be really the, the road forward for VR. No, I never tried those. I was always interested. I do have a cardboard projector, though, oh. uh, that you use your cell phone in, and that works pretty well. Hmm. Was that a just like DIY? Uh, was that a kit or was that a DIY YouTube kind of thing? Or say, hey, here's how you no, that was one. a kit. Oh, cool. Yeah, so you fold it, you fold it all up, pop your phone in there. Uh, it's got a really hefty lens on it, and it can project. It's not huge. It doesn't obviously. It doesn't compare at all to the Nebula that I use for gaming yeah. and movies and stuff like that. There's, it would be ridiculous to even put those side by side. But for what it is, it was pretty cool. So, do you think Pagan's going to be rolling out the Labo keyboard as part of the array of <laughs> synthesizers that's available to you? I guess you have to get a switch first, but yeah, I'd have to get a switch first. No, and no, probably not. Um, so, I, particularly in recent years, kind of moved away from electronic stuff. And obviously, I still play electronic instruments, but I, I moved away from digital, I should say, um, towards more analog stuff. And really that came from uh, to make it much, much harder on myself. <laughs> like, um, that's, that is what happened, but that's not why I did it. Um, so a thing happens when you're playing uh, digital synthesizers and samplers and things like that. Um, everybody has access to the same sounds. So like if you were to buy a digital synthesizer and let's just say you've never played, you have no musical experience at all. Um, you have access to the same sounds that I have access to. So you could come up with something. And, and again, I'm not saying this to like pat myself on the back. Some random person isn't going to play as well as me because I've been playing for years, but they have access to the same sounds. And with, you know, digital editing and things like that, they could make something that's somewhat comparable to what I could do. So I don't like that. <laughs> and so, and it, it's caused issues too. Um, we've had like YouTube content things going both ways. People, grabbing our content and flagging it and our people grabbing their content and flagging it as being, you know, ripoffs of each other. When in reality, they're not at all. They're just using similar samples and sounds because they're using the same digital synthesizers that we are. So moving a little bit more and more away from that, um, we did an album called Dead Girls where we played everything live in the studio, essentially for it. Very little was digital and very little was like overdubbed after the fact. Uh, so it's essentially most of the music is just me and Christian in a room. And we did the 1970s thing and like mic'd the room and just like played live in the room. So most of what you hear is just us playing live and it's kind of stick with that theme. I was like, and to move away from the issues we were having, I wanted to try out analog synthesizers, incredibly hard to play <laughs> um, and very expensive <laughs> once you get into that. But it's something I, I've really stuck with. 
And I think it's become kind of our, our thing now because a lot of the sounds that we have, other people just don't have access to. Cool. Good stuff. I still think you need answer. to answer. Yeah. <laughs> you still need to add a level. <laughs> you still <have> a <laughs> just for the little flourish at the end. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty cool. If you hadn't seen this video, you should check it out. He, John Carpenter is incredibly charming. His old man mode on what is this damn thing? <laughs> it's awesome. You, know, you, get, you get to meet a, a kind of a berated assistant who's helping him along. <laughs> it's, it's all good. So it's worth a, and then you get to hear a fairly painful version of the Halloween theme. So what, what more is there to ask? I, um, I don't know if I ever shared this on this podcast before, but I got to meet John. Car- I've met John Carpenter twice now, but the first time I ever met him, <clears throat> um, it was the first convention. He was kind of famous for not doing conventions and fan stuff and all that kind of thing. Um, and then now it's many years ago but he did his very first convention at monster mania and i was a guest at that monster mania and what's great is when you're a guest at these conventions you get to take full advantage of that (laughs) because you're there early and you're like backstage so i'm just going to get all my stuff signed and buying all my merchandise with nobody in the entire place it's great (laughs) so make a movie (laughs) <laughs> have it gain a cold following and this is how you get access to spending tons of money and getting autographs and things like that without waiting in lines <clears throat> um but the second day that i was there for monster mania was like john carpenter's day there and again first time ever that he was doing something like that so this is the only opportunity people have ever had to like get john carpenter to sign their dvds and albums and things like that <clears throat> so of course <clears throat> taking full advantage of everything i was like i'm gonna skip the john carpenter line and just go meet john carpenter um he got there a little bit later so i didn't get to do my usual you know i was there early met everybody got all my stuff signed bought all my merch so uh he was there a little later and i was you know walking up and i could see the line was through the building and outside so i walked up and i'm walking and i had the person that i live with with me who was my chauffeur and assistant that day. <laughs> um, so we're walking and mainly just because she wanted to meet Julian Sands. That's why she volunteered to be my chauffeur and assistant that day. Um, so we're walking through and the, of course the security guard's like, whoa, what's that? Cause I'm not John Carpenter. So nobody cares who I am when you're security. So, and I was like, no, sir, this badge means I'm important and I get to walk right past you and go wherever I want. He's like, you do, she doesn't. And I was like, no, no, that's my assistant. It's cool. And he's like, yeah. There's like a thousand people in line. He's like, this line wraps all the way around the building and throughout the parking lot. <laughs> He's like, if I let you skip the line, that's fine. If I let her skip the line, there's a riot. <laughs> so she wanted to meet John Carpenter. So we waited for a very long time to meet John Carpenter. I left, to be fair, I did leave the line multiple times to go and do things that I had to do, but it was hours and hours in line to meet John Carpenter. And when we got right there to get our stuff signed to meet him, he went to lunch. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) It was like, I'll be back in an hour. (laughs) So So you haven't bring you back some lunch? (laughs) (laughs) I was furious. Not at him because I mean, it's going to happen. Going to lunch. But just at the fact that I'm with somebody who didn't make a movie that got them invited to to this thing so that we could skip the line together so and much like john carpenter you were berating your assistant yeah i was why didn't you (laughs) why didn't you make a movie (laughs) okay get out of the picture (laughs) the next time i met him though it was it was a much easier thing we went to one of his shows uh when he was on tour and he came through and i really can't recommend to people enough uh as things open back up if he goes on tour again you should definitely check it out It's a really impressive live show. He plays not only stuff from his studio records, but of course all his famous movie themes and things like that. And when they're doing the movie themes, they play clips of those movies behind them on a big screen. And his band is great. It's his uh, godson and his son who back him up. And it sounds really great. Excellent. Yeah, I think you shared that story on your favorite podcast probably. So. (laughs) So thanks for, you know, the leftovers. It's great. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. You're Woo. Welcome. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and on that uplifting note, I think we'll wrap this particular show up so Mike can get back to his real podcast. And uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll catch you guys later. So thanks for watching, everybody.
Thanks, everybody.